According to reports published during the recent U.S. operation against Yemen, an F-35 fighter jet was forced to perform emergency maneuvers to evade a missile fired by Houthi forces. The admission by a U.S. official, part of which was included in a recent New York Times report, indicates that the F-35's advanced missile detection and countermeasure systems failed to neutralize the threat before it reached a dangerous stage. This event follows previous Houthi successes against advanced American technologies. They had previously managed to shoot down at least seven MQ-9 drones, each valued at around $30 million, which significantly limited U.S. Central Command's ability to conduct reconnaissance and precision strikes. Analysis of newly released information reveals that the secret to the Houthis' success lies in their use of infrared sensors. This technology, considered a blind spot for stealth aircraft, has effectively neutralized the F-35's stealth capability, making it possible to track and target it. What makes this achievement more striking is the comparison with the efforts of major powers like Russia and China. Despite their huge investments in advanced air defense systems like the S-400 and HQ-9, there have been no reports of them achieving similar success in seriously challenging F-35 fighters. Due to the importance of this topic, in this video, we will examine the air defense technologies of the Ansar Allah Group, Iran's key role in developing asymmetric air defense tactics and low-cost systems to counter advanced aircraft, and the vulnerabilities of the F-35 fighter. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe to the Top Strategist channel and support us by liking and sharing this video. Analyzing the challenge the F-35 faced in air operations against Yemen requires a detailed examination of the technical specifications and operational capabilities of the Houthi air defense systems. Contrary to the common perception that this group lacks advanced defensive capabilities, new information shows that the Houthis, with Iran's help, have acquired a diverse array of missile systems and sophisticated sensors. However, what makes this arsenal dangerous is not necessarily the advanced technology itself, but the clever strategy of integrating old and new systems and exploiting the blind spots of Western technology. New information reveals the key role of missile systems and infrared sensors in the Houthis' air defense capabilities. These weapons are an intelligent combination of simple and advanced technologies that have unexpectedly managed to challenge the world's most advanced fighter jet. At the forefront of these systems is the Sakib series of missiles. The Sakib-1 and Sakib-2 are essentially redesigned versions of the Russian R-73 and R-27 air-to-air missiles, modified for ground launch. The unique feature of these missiles is their use of infrared IR seekers. Unlike radar homing missiles that use electromagnetic waves for guidance, these missiles operate passively, tracking the heat signature of an aircraft's engines. The significance of this lies in the fact that the F-35's electronic defense systems are primarily designed to counter radar threats. The F-35's Advanced Electronic Warfare System, designed to detect and counter radar signals, has greater vulnerability to infrared seekers, which emit no signals. In fact, stealth technology, which is considered the F-35's main advantage, has little effectiveness against this technology. Analyzing the challenge the F-35 faced in air operations against Yemen requires a detailed examination of the technical specifications and operational capabilities of the Houthi air defense systems. Contrary to the common perception that this group lacks advanced defensive capabilities, new information shows that the Houthis, with Iran's help, have acquired a diverse array of missile systems and sophisticated sensors. However, what makes this arsenal dangerous is not necessarily the advanced technology itself, but the clever strategy of integrating old and new systems and exploiting the blind spots of Western technology. New information reveals the key role of missile systems and infrared sensors in the Houthis' air defense capabilities. These weapons are an intelligent combination of simple and advanced technologies that have unexpectedly managed to challenge the world's most advanced fighter jet. At the forefront of these systems is the Sakib series of missiles. The Sakib-1 and Sakib-2 are essentially redesigned versions of the Russian R-73 and R-27 air-to-air missiles, modified for ground launch. The unique feature of these missiles is their use of infrared IR seekers. Unlike radar homing missiles that use electromagnetic waves for guidance, these missiles operate passively, tracking the heat signature of an aircraft's engines.
The significance of this lies in the fact that the F-35's electronic defense systems are primarily designed to counter radar threats. The F-35's advanced electronic warfare system, designed to detect and counter radar signals, has greater vulnerability to infrared seekers, which emit no signals. In fact, stealth technology, which is considered the F-35's main advantage, has little effectiveness against this technology. Alongside the Saqib missiles, another important Houthi weapon is the Sakr series of missiles. The Sakr-1, also known as the 358, is a loitering surface-to-air missile with unique capabilities. This missile, which flies using a turbojet engine instead of the usual solid-fuel rocket, can patrol the sky and wait for a target. The Sakr-1 is also equipped with a cluster of 12 infrared lenses mounted around the missile's body, allowing it to detect aircraft from various angles. Other systems employed by the Houthis include the Bark-1 and Bark-2 missiles, which were officially unveiled in September 2023. The Houthis claim these missiles can engage targets at ranges of 50 and 70 kilometers and at altitudes of 15 to 20 kilometers. These missiles are developed based on the Iranian Tayyar missile family, which itself is derived from former Soviet air defense systems like the Kub and Buk. The 2K-12 Kub system, known in the West as the SA-6 Gainful, is a mobile air defense system designed in the 1960s with all-weather operational capability. This system can target aircraft at altitudes from 30 meters to 24 kilometers and can track targets with speeds up to 900 meters per second. The main advantage of the Kub is its high mobility, which allows it to quickly change its position, appear surprisingly, fire, and immediately relocate. The 9K37 Book system is the next generation of this air defense system, which entered service in the 1980s and offers more advanced capabilities. This system can track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, and its range extends to 50 kilometers. The Book also has the ability to counter cruise missiles, guided bombs, and various types of tactical aircraft. Alongside missile systems, fire control radars are an important part of this equation. The Bark-1 and Bark-2 missiles are supported for target detection and acquisition by early warning radars like the Russian P-18 and the Iranian Mirage. Although these radars are not advanced, they are effective through guerrilla tactics and high mobility. Another complex and lesser-known aspect of the Houthis' air defense capabilities is the use of virtual radar technology. In 2018, Saudi officials announced they had discovered an Iranian-made electronic tracking system that passively receives air traffic control signals emitted by military and commercial aircraft. This technology, using satellite-based automatic surveillance systems and other passive tracking methods, allows the Houthis to receive and decrypt precise information on the geographic position, altitude, angle of movement, direction, speed, nationality, and flight ID of all aircraft within a radius of over 250 kilometers. However, what makes the Houthis' air defense strategy particularly effective is the combination of these missile systems with a network of infrared sensors. The Houthis typically release footage from their infrared cameras after claiming to intercept American aircraft, indicating the widespread use of this technology for detection, tracking, and targeting. These systems are used not only to guide missiles with IR seekers, but also to assist in guiding various types of radar-guided missiles. Michael Knights, a senior fellow at the Washington Institute, believes the main reason for the Houthis and Iranian preference for electro-optical systems is the passive nature of this technology. These systems emit no waves, making them virtually undetectable by anti-radiation missiles before launch. According to this expert, this feature creates a significant tactical advantage that makes the Houthi air defense unexpectedly dangerous. The U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, in a declassified report released in July 2024, officially confirmed the Houthis' use of the Soccer one or 358 missile. The report specifically notes that these missiles, utilizing passive infrared seekers, have been used to target American drones. The F-35 Lightning II, a product of Lockheed Martin, is recognized as the world's most advanced multi-role fighter. With a cost of over $100 million per unit, it is the cornerstone of the air power of the United States and its allies. This fighter is equipped with the AN-APG-81 Active Electronically Scanned Array ACER radar, which provides unparalleled situational awareness. 
The AN slash AAQ37 Distributed Aperture System, DAS, also incorporates a network of six infrared sensors, enabling 360 degree missile detection and tracking. The ANASQ-239 Barracuda Electronic Warfare System allows the fighter to jam enemy radars and use various decoys, such as infrared flares. The F-35 stealth design reduces its radar cross-section (RCS), making it very difficult to detect by conventional radars. Its powerful F-135 engine provides the fighter with a speed of Mach 1.6 and a combat radius of over 960 kilometers. Despite these impressive capabilities, the F-35, like any weapon system, has vulnerabilities. One of the most significant weaknesses becomes apparent when facing passive infrared sensors. The F-35 stealth technology is primarily designed to counter high-frequency radars, but this technology cannot hide the heat signature of its powerful engine. Another noteworthy point about the F-35 relates to its rear aspect, which, according to experts, has a larger-than-desired radar cross-section and may make the aircraft vulnerable to detection and even engagement from the rear. Furthermore, to use its air-to-air -air and air-to-ground munitions, the F-35 must open its internal weapons bays, which creates a brief opportunity for air defenses to detect the aircraft by radar from much greater distances. A historical precedent for this reality was the downing of the American F-117 Nighthawk stealth fighter by Serbian air defenses in 1999 using Soviet-made surface-to-air missiles. For these reasons, even today, American stealth aircraft like the F-35 and the B-2 bomber, when possible, use support from electronic warfare and suppression of enemy air defenses SAD, which is provided by non-stealth aircraft. Therefore, a combination of various factors, including a degree of luck, can still lead to the downing of these aircraft. Another concern raised by the information released about the F-35's encounter with Houthi air defenses is the potential need for combat search and rescue operations in the event of a fighter crash over Yemen. The U.S. military has long faced growing challenges regarding how to respond to the downing of stealth aircraft in highly contested environments in future conflicts. After the possibility of F-35s being shot down became a serious concern, CENTCOM released images the following week of HH-60W Jolly Green 2 rescue helicopters from the U.S. Air Force, which have been deployed in the Middle East, indicating their preparation for such a scenario. However, deploying slow-moving helicopters to a region where the air defense has successfully shot down one of the most survivable aircraft in the U.S. military is itself very vexing. This issue could lead to a chain of losses, as rescue assets are much more vulnerable compared to fighter jets, and deploying them to a danger zone entails a higher risk of human and equipment losses. What is your opinion on the air defense capabilities of the Ansar Allah Group and Iran encountering advanced American fighter jets? Please write your opinions for us in the comments. If you liked this video, please like and share it. Thank you for being with us until the end of this video.